Hello, my name is Nicholas Leverett. I am a sophomore here at the University of North Carolina Central. And today I will be doing my case study on emotional and social development. So to start off, um, the first thing you see is, you know, you see three kids playing together. They look like their siblings. They're playing together on the seesaw. And, you know, as they play, they played on that for a good bit. And then after a while, uh, it looks like the youngest boy of them all, he looks like he, you know, he gets tired, you know, he just gets up and, you know, he walks away. So the first thing he goes to is, you know, a little fire truck, you know, a little fire truck station. And he goes in there, you know, he plays, he act, he's acting like he's driving, you know, all that. And then later he just gets up, he walks away. He Then he goes to a kind of a little, you know, music section of the playground where, the, you know, there's there's fake bongos or like, you know, chimes, and, you know, it's, it's all type of musical instruments. So he goes over there, he plays by himself, and then he gets up and he walks to the slide. And you know, he plays for the, he plays with the, on the slide for a little bit, and you know, you can tell he's having a lot of fun by himself. He then goes back to the fire truck, you know, he plays with that a little bit more. Then after a while playing with that, he gets up and walk, walks around, his mother follows him as he walks around, you know, to keep him safe, of course. Then he goes back to the um, playground and, you know, he just sits. So obviously you can tell that he's really tired, and, you know, that he's worked the sweat and that he's had a good time. So one of the first things I saw when I uh, looked at the kids play was two boys and a girl playing on the seesaw. And it was very obvious that they were, all three of them were having a lot of fun. And that basically just shows you their basic emotion. You know, they were showing their excitement and how happy they were. And that's just all a part of emotional development. So <clears throat> the next thing we're gonna to get to is temperament and development. So as you can see, all three of the kids show, you know, cheerful and they were all they were all active and they were all energetic so that's that right there is just showing their temperament children often respond to the emotions of others so basically what I'm, basically this saying is you know the little boy saw the two little boys seen the other girl happy and they you know they started to get happy or vice versa the girl seen the two little boys happy and you know they were all having a great time just because of the emotions going around so as the uh, kids started playing, as you know, as time went on, you know, then you started to find the emergence of self-conscious emotions, and basically what that is, you know, that's the secondary emotions, and that's your, that's your, you know, your embarrassment, your envy, your pride, you know, your shame and your guilt, and the the little boy in the blue and red, he started to show his, you know, secondary, you know, self-conscious emotions because you know he started to show embarrassment after, you know. After a little while, he started to get scared, and then you could tell that, you know, he was embarrassed. So that's a self-conscious emotion. So <clears throat> the next thing we're going to get to is temperament and development. So as you can see, all three of the kids showed, you know, cheerful, and they were all they were all active, and they were all energetic. So that's that right there is just showing their temperament. So Rothbart had his own model of temperament, and he uh, classified it in two sections. He had reactivity and self-regulation. In reactivity, there was activity level. You know, that's the level of gross motor activity. There's the attention span and uh, persistence. That's just, you know, the duration and orientation of interest. Then he had fear for distress. That was the weariness and distress in response to novel stimuli. Then there was irritable distress. That's when the kid cries, fuss, and you know, it just gets really aggravated when the kid doesn't get what he wants. And then there's the positive effect, you know, that's just, you know, the kids showing their happiness and pleasure and letting the parent know that they're having fun. Then there's effort control for self-regulation. So in effort for control, that's basically saying, you know, when you voluntarily suppress a dominant and reactive response in order to plan and execute a more, you know, adaptive response you know so when we talk about ethnic and gender differences we talk about you know different races and you know how they're brought up and you know their type of activity level so when we compare you know caucasians like in a video versus you know japanese and asians you know caucasians tend to be more active and more vocal versus the you know the japanese and the uh, asian kids you know they they're not as you know active they're not as vocal you know they're very you know silent they play they don't they don't really like to run around a lot so today i have just talked to you about emotional and social development in children and infancy and toddlerhood and i hope you did enjoy this video thank you